In fact, no, let's start this video very differently. Let's start with you telling me what is your go-to club in the bag? Comments down below. So for me, the most difficult part of the bag to fill is that long end of the bag and very much the difference between where your sort of final iron in the bag is up to your driver. How do you fill that gap? And often, if you can find the right club to fill it, it will be what is your go-to club off the tee, off the fairway, the most difficult shot in the bag, which is very much those long iron replacements. And the options are simple. You've either got hybrid, you've got fairway woods, or you've got driving irons. And they all perform very, very differently. Some of them might be suited to your game, some of them might not. And the idea of today's video originally started with a review of the Mizuno Fly High driving iron. And we will do that, but we're also gonna throw in a few added options into that mix. And that's where it gets really interesting and threw in a real dilemma for me on a personal level which we'll reveal as the video pans out. So in today's video, what I want to explore is the differences between these three clubs, because when we make some adjustments to the 5-wood and the 2 hybrid, all the loss will be equal. And that's at 16 and a half degrees, which is where the unadjustable fly high sits. But what are we expecting to see? Now, the 5-wood is the longest shaft. The 2 hybrid is then the sort of uh, the second longest shaft and the shorter out of the 3 will be the hybrid. So from a distance perspective, I'm fully expecting the five hybrid to be the longest of them and that will fall down to the two iron to be the shortest. I'm also expecting to see a significant difference in ball flight and launch angle. And again, for me, logically in the brain, I'm thinking with the bulk and mass and the CG way back in the five wood, that'll be the highest launch. It'll have the tallest peak height. And again, much flatter ball flight down into this two fly high. So they're the differences. The question is, what happens when we start to record some dry ball data? And does that ring true? So in other words, is what you think in your mentality and what the obvious things that you would suggest might happen, do they ring true when I start hitting some golf balls? It's time to find out, I think. Now, I am very much a strong advocate of getting as much loft as you can on kind of Hybrids, fairway woods, I like the idea of kind of like five, six hybrids and again five and seven woods as well. I think they're a great help to majority of average golfers. But we do need to look at the long end of the gate, uh, the long long end of the bag, and even so much as options off the tee instead of driver, which is something I favoured in the past. So for me, the idea of playing a shorter length driving iron is really appealing. Now I'm going to hit a couple of balls just a with this fly high to start with. And I'll give you my sort of opinion and feedback on this club because ultimately that's where this video started. That was where the planning was and that's what we intended to do. It sits so nice at address. I love, they did what they did with the ES21 wedges and then it's two colors. It's this dark sort of gray color and then a silver top line, silver face. And I think what that does really well is it frames the ball and acts as superb alignment aid. The other thing to notice at address, it's not overly bulky, There's a, but you do see a little bit at that back end. And it's interesting where you go from when it's a game improvement iron, you don't want to see any bulk and mass. You want to see everything stripped down. You want to be looking like a, a classic blade. But when you've got a club like this, you're under two iron with only 16 and a half degrees aloft, you actually want to see a little bit of bulk because it's mentally telling you there might be a bit of help there. So again, just the odd mentality the golfer shines through there where it's okay for one club, but not for another. I'll hit, like I said, a couple of balls, but I've got to say from a looks perspective and the black shaft as well, it's absolutely stunning. I would have no problems having this on the bag in terms of um, from a looks perspective. The next thing you'll, you'll hear hopefully is the sound and feel. Don't forget, hollow bodied again, very much in the vein of the HMBs, which was a huge fan of in recent weeks and the 225 range. This again is that from that Mizuno Pro. The sound is very much similar to that HMB. Um, yes, it's hollow bodied. No, it's not uh, forged. They've put the face in this is similar to what they've had, or not similar. It's the same as what they've got in some of their fairway woods at the moment. And again, sort of a very sort of powerful ball strike, uh, ball speed rather out of the face. And it's sort of recognizable, a really decent ball there to start with. 
What surprised me about the fly high is the kind of things that I said just two minutes ago was you're expecting a sort of very low piercing ball fight. And yes, it does that, but probably launches just a little bit higher than I would have expected it to. And also does it a little bit easier. I've got this teed up on sort of a very low tee, but something that I'd be comfortable with playing off the tee. We'll hit one more with this before we move on. And then I explain why there's a massive dilemma in this testing that we've done with this club and uh, something I wasn't expecting at all. Well, that's a super shot, that is. I mean, I'm amazed. I tried um, the P790 driving iron UDI just a few weeks back and again, I reported with that was just how easy these clubs have, are, are now to play. I mean, it's a two iron with 16 and a half degrees aloft. It would have generally frightened me to death, but it is very, very playable. And I'm more than happy with what we did there. But I said like earlier in the video, this is about a long game replacement and where you go to next. We've got this lofted down a little bit for, for, for the uh, purpose of the video. And that's all, this isn't a comparison. This is a Ping G425, two hybrid, 16 and a half degrees. Totally different because all of a sudden now you are seeing a lot of bulk and mass. And I think it's again, it's that confidence factor, isn't it? Two iron frightens you to death. Hybrid, we're much more familiar with it. Even though we've not got a great deal of loft on it, we can certainly see some of it on the face there with the way Ping have got this designed. And again, what's really interesting is how good the hybrid sounds in compared to the rest of the G425 range. Because it's been a criticism that I've got with the driver and with the fairway woods in sort of how loud they are. And it doesn't seem to do quite the same with the hybrid, but again, really easy to play. Great launch on the ball. I can't believe how far this thing is going. Again, we're hitting the ball pretty decent here this morning. I kind of almost like to see these reviews when you're not hitting the ball that well. And it throws that question again back to the two fly high. If you're not hitting the ball that well, what happens then? But again, real good option as that long game replacement. And certainly, I would suggest, we've seen there that it goes further than that of the two iron, but gets there in a different way. And you move on to the five wood, and we know what to expect. We're now standing a little bit further away from the ball. Don't forget, that longer shaft is going to make a difference in terms of club head speed, and in theory, should produce a longer carry. But let's see if that's the case. I don't know whether you heard the noise there. Can you hear the noise on that? <laughs> It's just so different out of the five wood compared to the hybrid. This is much more in line with the driver. It's almost like a gunshot going off. The hybrid, for some reason, and as far as I know, face and everything is the same in that G425 range. The sound is so much softer in the hybrid. Right, one more shot with this, and I'll tell you why this has become such a massive dilemma on a personal level and why an intended video of a review of a Mizuno Pro Fly High turned into something very different for me personally. <laughs> There's that gunshot. My God, can you hear it? Yeah. But what you can't argue with is the ball has gone and it's probably done what we'd have expected. You've just seen on screen there, hopefully. Um, ball has flown extremely high, fairly long to say the least, quite surprisingly long, as with the other two. And that leads me on to why I'm so confused personally and the big shock I had with all the numbers that I've just collected on these three very different clubs. Now, another interesting fact for me is the, these are all lofted exactly the same, but perform very, very differently. And I think for me, I've very much been someone who's uh, driven home this idea that for particularly the people who are not comfortable with strong lofted irons, they're always against the sort of strength of loft. But I think what you'll see in today's video is that although these three clubs that we're gonna be testing have identical lofts, they all perform very, very differently. So loft is only a small part of the equation when it comes to a golf club's performance or how it gets from A to B. The other point to mention for me is the kind of positives and negatives of each of these clubs as an option. If you start with the five wood, maybe they're more difficult to use because of length of shaft, so that could be a control issue, but it's certainly versatile in terms of you'd be happy to play it off the tee and off of the fairway. 
I think it's the hybrid, which I think naturally would be probably the most versatile option out of these three. Again, very comfortable off the tee and off the fairway. And also that shorter length shaft or sits in the middle of these three, at least a bit more control. So most people be confident over that kind of shaft length at address. The one negative with the uh, any hybrid is a lot of people have that fear of the sort of uh, that shot to the left. Often a hook can be quite an easy one to uh, produce with a hybrid. And then maybe the least versatile would be the two fly high. For me, 16 and a half degree, two iron would only be an option off the tee really, unlikely to feel confident playing off the fairway. But going back to this idea about the reviewing of the fly high Mizuno Pro iron, it is available in a three and a four iron option as well. And for me, that's probably where you'd feel a little bit more comfortable, where you could perhaps bag a four or a three, and it would give you the versatile, a versatility that the five would and the hybrid offer as well. Although, I will say, I am at this point incredibly surprised at just how playable this two iron option has been. So the question you must all be asking yourself is what was the dilemma it threw up for me and I'll uh, get there very very soon. We'll start off with the numbers of the five wood that I collected and what I can't believe and I think that uh, I've not watched it back yet but I've got feeling I hit a ball 240 yards with the five wood where we were doing that test in there but I don't know I haven't seen that footage back yet. I hit the ball really well today and if I have it a five wood 240 two yards which I think it said then that's incredible but the data I recorded prior to that I didn't quite get one there but what I did do is perform really well club head speed 91 mile an hour ball speeds 142 which is phenomenal off that club head speed 225 on average carry the longest ball it was 232 um, launching at 13.1 peak height of 89 and a spin rate of 32 so it probably did everything that I would expect it to do probably performed a little bit better in terms of yards if you'd have asked me what the way at five would it have been sort of around that sort of 220 mark and like I said we got that one weird knuckle ball out there which was a probably a bit of a an outlier on it all but on average 225 carry hitting the ball the way I did today really really pleased with that and that's where it would have been now into that fly high which was the original review and again 89 uh, club head speed which again don't forget shorter shaft so that's where that couple of mile club head speed will be different but 138 ball speeds are really consistent across all those numbers 216 carry longest ball being 222 but again 222 221 219 218 that's the bit that surprised me about the fly high in that yeah we had a couple drop out at what was it lower well, one ball really 208 when i recorded days and one at 211 one at 213 so clearly suggests a little bit more difficult to play and you've got to get that middle but overall really surprised 11.7 again a couple of degrees lower than the five wood so that peak height was only 62 and the spin was a lot lower so again a totally different club and how you look to use that particular to fly high so at this stage the numbers i've seen were probably what i was expecting although the fly high probably performed better than i ex would have expected it to in my hands so where does the uh, dilemma come in and what happened well i've had the sort of g4 25 2 hybrid as a sample from ping for well best part of a year i suppose and not really took much notice of it because two hybrid not much loft i'm an advocate of playing hybrids with loft so i haven't bothered with it Maybe I shouldn't have uh, ignored it for quite so long because we had a club head speed of 89.6, again, length of shaft, ball speed at 140.5, an average of 228 carry, launching at 13.6, peak height of 83, 2,500 revs. But look at the consistency on the carry distances. The lowest ball was 220. The other five, the other four are literally separated by a couple of yards either side of 230 yards. I cannot stress the fact that yes, I have hit the ball probably as good as I have done on a camera today. So we've got to bear that in mind. Having said that, 230 yards carry with a two hybrid was a phenomenal number and one that I really have to now think about putting in the bag as a go-to club. It performed, as you've seen out there on the fairways. Again, I like the idea of having that shorter shaft. And if I've got an option of it in a two hybrid or a five wood, I'd rather play the two hybrid and have that shorter shaft in hand than the greater control. 
So that's it, video ended. I think that uh, maybe the clubs aren't for everybody, maybe the loft isn't for everybody, but for me, again, I do launch the ball quite high as well. Then it seemed to really play into my hands. And it was a video that was never intended to be about my own personal dilemmas about the long end in the bag, but trying to see whether a fly high was an option for an average golfer at 16 and a half degrees aloft. I think on that basis, I would say, yes, it's well worth a try. Certainly the three and four, long irons in that fly eye range are certainly worth giving a go but the biggest surprise out of all of this was uh, give yourself a go of a two hybrid and uh, it might end up being your new go-to club in the bag right as ever thank you for watching thank you for card and park for letting us use this fantastic facility which has been brilliant we've had the heat on throughout it's been what a glorious day out on the fairways as well so uh, yeah we're grateful for that thank you for watching don't forget that comment early on i asked for what is your go-to club Hit that like button and I will see you all very soon.